Live. Hey, Lab Coat agents. Welcome to this series. This one's sponsored by Firepoint. If you haven't heard of Firepoint, I have no idea where the hell you've been, but it's an <laughs> all in one website and CRM. Take a look at it. They're really, really ramping up everything on there. We just took a look at it. Nick, um, we love it. Well, what I love about Firepoint is that it's got really all the bells and whistles of the stuff of the of the of the ones that charge you fifteen hundred bucks a month, and it's literally a fraction of the price. Like that's what I love about it. It's got all the analytics, it's got the data, it's got the texting, it's got the video, it has all the. So wait, stuff. You, you don't want to spend all your money on the software. You want some left over for lead gen, right? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you get this two thousand dollar a month software, and you're like, uh, wait, now I don't have any money for leads. That's so, so funny. You know, yeah, I appreciate that. Well, Gabe, yes. What's the secret to 800, bro? Because look, I we posted it up on lab coats and we're getting people telling us, wow, we barely have 800 in our population. I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah, one guy who was like, you mean 80, right? I'm like, no, that extra zero is not a typo. <laughs> I saw that. I saw that. Well, I mean, it doesn't happen overnight. Let's just, let's start there, right? It, it yeah. takes Wait, before we go on, before we start, I just want to say, Gabe, do you still have a real estate team or or no? Yeah, so we still so uh, so my partner's running the team. Uh, everything now. We recently uh, moved it over as an independent boutique brokerage. Well, let's start there. Let me. How about I just give a little bit of the? Yeah, uh, we're gonna start there because I want people to know that you're an actual realtor. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. So I mean, first of all, thanks for having me. I mean, I, I'm excited. Firepoint's excited. Um, I, we got to be part of your event in San Diego, which was incredible. So anybody who didn't attend that, that should definitely be on their calendar coming up. I think it's this next May, like tons of content, but it was awesome to be get, uh, to get to be part of that and share. And what I want to do it and different and, and I mean, Firepoint's awesome. We want everybody to check it out, but at the end of the day, I'm here to help offer content, right? From a point of perspective of, of being there and have probably lost as much, if not more money than probably anybody on this webinar. Um, and have made more mistakes. So I, I love starting with that. In fact, yeah, I got into real estate about 16 years ago. All right. So when I moved to Boise, I did not have a, a book of business there. I didn't have a, a friend or a family member that was, was in the business. I knew nobody, right. And got into real estate uh, and I was scared to death. Right. And I think almost anybody can relate when they get into real estate, we're scared, right. It costs a fortune to get in. And most of us don't know where that next deal is going to come from, how we're going to get it. We're just like hoping and praying that we can close a deal. You know, if you're in Tristan's market every, every few months, if you're in a normal market like the rest of us, you know, how do I close a, a deal like at least every month so that I can make a living, right? Because uh, let's be honest, real estate is not a cheap industry to be in. And it's so easy to spend money. We get called as agents, brokers, team leads all the time. Where can we spend more and more money? So when I got in, like I had to get focused right off the bat because Fear was my motivator at that time, guys. I, I did not have the money. I could barely pay to get through school and get my license and pay rent. I didn't even own a home at the time. Oh my God. Um, Which but, is not bad, dude, but that's amazing. Fear. No, well, it was scary. Right? I think fear is a great motivator, right? Like, I think sometimes we're, we're afraid to take that next step or make a commitment. But for me, anyway, fear is a great motivator. It pushed me forward. So, um, you know, I had to start out small and, and get going. And, you know, I didn't have business. So I had to swallow my pride and, beg agents in my office, uh, agents and other brokerages, you know, can I see your open houses? Can I advertise your properties? And I'm going to go through ideas and, and share with you guys how I did that, but it didn't happen overnight. So yeah, I've been in the trenches with you guys for the last 16 years. Um, as I grew my business and, and started building a team uh, and then the brokerage and then satellite teams, um, that, that, that's how we got to 800. I'm going to share those steps, but then you know, my obsession were very, you mean 80, right? 80. Yeah. Yeah. 80. Yeah. No, no, not 80. <laughs> There's a lot more and it takes a team, right? So it wasn't me opening those doors. I'm going to share with you guys because you can't scale. You can't be everywhere. And, and you guys already know this. You're out on the road. Teams are the, you're, you're either going to be on a team or leading a team and, and both work, right? It's just finding that right seat. But, but that is the path to working smarter, not harder and making more money. And, and we're going to go through all that. But yeah, my obsession, because we're all obsessive compulsive as real estate agents, right? We easily get distracted. We're chasing things. And as we got to that point to where uh, my team and I were selling, you know, six, seven, 800 homes uh, a year, it, it came and it shifted to how do we share and how do we help agents not make the same mistakes that we made, not lose the thousands and thousands of dollars, right? And when, it, and when I started, it was tens of dollars or maybe hundreds of dollars, but it felt like tens of thousands at that time. 
right? So that's where I really want to kind of share with you. If, if you want to scale and you want to become a top agent in your market, whether it's just an individual agent selling, you know, 50 to 80 homes or a team selling 200 to 1,000 homes a year, that, that's what I'm helping people do. And that's what, what I'm traveling with a bunch of other great speakers. I mean, Nick, you and I have shared a, a stage probably more than, than anybody else um, on here, but it's, it's honestly like sharing this, right? And I don't care if it's in my market, in the market where we have a team, because we know most agents aren't going to do it. So let's, let's share the wealth. There's, there's enough business out there for everybody. Let's give them the, the strategies, the process, and, and, and the roadmap to be successful in their market. Because the people who are hungry and are motivated, whether it's by fear or success, whatever it is, they're going to be the ones that, that picked up the drop balls that are just laying all the way you know, from here to there and run with it and build their business. Love so Love Gabe, how many members on your team right now? Um, so in, in Boise, oh my gosh, I, I want to say it's right around 10 or 12. We've, we've done some restructuring with going from Boutique over to, to EXP and then working with a team out of Portland to, to share strategies and all that and helping them put in vendor programs and a lot of the stuff I'm going to share with you guys on, on, on how to do this. And, and the key is, guys, you know, down the road, and we're going to get to the steps, also not have to pay for this. So if you're already thinking, oh my gosh, that's not me, I can't afford to build a team, or doing it, please pay attention, please listen, because this does not all have to be on you. And I want to show you the steps on how to help build this business. It does not all have to come out of your pocket. You want to know what's funny? So it's interesting because, um, you know, so, I mean, limiting belief is the worst thing that agents can, can do for themselves and more agents than not have it. And, you know, I've been, you know, now that I've been in a different role in my brokerage where I'm talking to agents and trying to grow the brokerage, what I'm finding is that they they don't really they they they've got this mindset where no that cannot be accomplished right, right. Like, there's no way someone can generate 400 leads a month there's no way someone can sell 800 houses there's no way someone could have multiple teams in multiple states and it it's it's really like it's really quite upsetting because we're going to talk about that now. It's all about leverage. And Tristan and I talk about this all the time. Leverage is the new hustle. It doesn't mean you shouldn't hustle, right? It means that you got to surround yourself with people and systems that can help you do the job better and more effectively. I say that part again. It's exactly what you just said. You have to surround yourself with people and have systems that help you do the job more effectively. That, that is it. And I think that, you know, whether it's, 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 it's hustle or or a fear or limiting beliefs that, I mean, it could be the same thing, but it feels different to every person. And, and if you're on your own right now, you know, you're, you're a single agent, you're not going to jump newsflash. You're not going to jump to 800 homes in the next year, or you're not going <laughs> to jump to 10 or, you know, 15 or 20. And if you do, you're probably not doing it the right way. It's, it's all about scaling and surrounding yourself with the right people and the right systems to grow your business. And the way, and I, I don't know for sure, but I'm going to guess exactly the way you do it, Nick, is probably not the exact same way that Tristan does it, that I do it. Everybody has to find their niche in the way that they do it. Our markets are different. Uh, we have different selling seasons. We have different average prices. We have different um, um, needs and wants. Like it's similar and there's a lot of overlap in markets. So you have to take everything that, whether I'm saying it or you guys are saying it or, or coach A or coach B is saying and adapt it. But but what I think it comes down to is you don't have to reinvent the wheel regardless what market. There's a lot of experience that's being shared that we can help you with that you can adapt to you. But it still comes down to uh, surrounding yourself with the right people and the right systems. And people doesn't have to mean your team, right? Your buyer's agents and stuff. Because everybody mm -hmm. starts like, oh, we have this team, you know. And I said, I had a team the entire time and I didn't realize it. Like, and here, here's one of the things I didn't realize. We all work with a lender, right? We all work with home inspectors. We all work with title people. You know, they're constantly calling us, wanting to take us to lunch. Um, and, and I had a shift. It's like, this is my team. Right now, I don't have a buyer's agent or I don't have an assistant. And I'm doing all this. I'm a, I'm a one-man show and I'm doing all this. But I had a team. And what was crazy is they were so willing to help me. I just had to ask. I had the right people around me. I didn't realize it, but I didn't have the system yet. And, 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 and that's really where it starts. And you have to just kind of put on that CEO hat and realize you can't do it all yourself. Get out of your own way. Allow other people to help you build this business because there are so many people that are spending money to, to market themselves, the lenders, the title people. Trust me, do they want to go out finding 15, 20 people a week to, to, to invite to lunch or, or to partner on just listed, just old, whatever it is? Or do they want to actually have a, a system in place with agents wanting to grow and scale their business? Okay, tell us. 
Well, Tell us the story between you shifting from where you where you were as an agent, so that people can see the progression yeah. to eight hundred. Because that that's where the that's where the secret is for all of us. We want to know what that process looked like for yeah. growth. Yeah, absolutely. So 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 I, I've come up with about you know seven steps that I honestly think can get you there. And whether it's eight hundred or whether it's a hundred or it's one hundred and fifty or two hundred, and it's you and now maybe an assistant or you and a buyer's agent. We can scale that. What I thought was, we, I kind of tell you what the seven, you know, really steps are, and then maybe we'll kind of go deep on one or so today. And we're going to get together once a month and basically put together this whole roadmap and share because we, we can only absorb so much, right? So we want to cover what we can in, you know, 20, 30 minutes, give you a couple nuggets to walk away with, um, and then come back in a month, come back in a month. We can always add to it. But what happened to me, um, and if you, for those of you who have seen me speak, and you guys have a couple of times, I always start talking about self-honesty, right? It's okay to fail. And I started with, I've already, I guarantee you I have failed and screwed up more than anybody on this webinar. It's can you learn from it and, and give yourself permission to fail, right? It, it's okay as long as you're learning from it. So what I started noticing, guys, when, when I started, when I got 30, 40 agents in my market uh, to allow me to advertise their listings to find buyers, and if you're shaking your head saying that's not going to happen, that's the first thing you need to get over, right? It's all in what you're approaching. Almost anybody's gonna say, yeah, if you, can, if you can find buyers for this, please do it, right? Whatever it is. But what I started realizing, I was being honest with myself, this thing was going off. I wasn't responding to calls. I wasn't responding to voicemails and I was leaving money on the table. And I had to get honest with myself as far as where I was failing in my business and I needed help, right? And I could not get past like hiring an assistant or full-time transaction coordinator. I'm like, I, and, and in Boise, it's probably a fraction of the cost of what it is in Southern California or somewhere else. But I couldn't get past the fact that, man, I don't have, you know, 2,000, 2,500, 3,000, whatever that amount is a month to hire somebody to help me, even though I know I was dropping the ball, dropping the ball. And, um, and my broker reached out and just said, you need better systems. Like you're a techie guy. Why don't you have a system in place? So the first thing, guys, I don't care if you're on your own, and this is not a necessarily a firepoint thing, you have to have a system in place and it needs to be a CRM website. It is like, you need to look at it as your 24 seven assistant, right? When you're too tired, when you're sick, when you're not going, it's letting you know about your tasks. It's sending out your property searches. It's your campaigns that are running. It's notifying you when people are asking questions about property. You need a system, uh, Nick already hit it. You have to have the right people. And if you're a single agent, that's your lender, a title officer, your home inspectors, you've probably got those. Now you have to have the right systems in place to manage the, the database and the leads coming in before you start, you know, generating and spending more money. Like you have to have the systems in place because this is the first team member of your team. It's 24 seven, takes a little bit of time, but as soon as you start looking at, man, if I implement the right systems in place and, and if it's FirePoint, that's great. If it's somebody else, I don't care. Just get one. I recommend it's an all in one because when the back end CRM and the, and the front facing website are talking together, uh, magic's happening and more work is getting done automatically or automated for you in the background. So just get one and put it in. And if you think about it, literally stop down and go, okay, if I had the right systems, even if you don't know what they are, if I have the right systems in place, the CRM, the website, sorry, I get excited. I get going on my soapbox. But if I you think if I had all this happening, yes. would I sell one more deal a month? Okay. Well, maybe not. Would I sell one more deal every two months? Be really conservative. Would I sell one more deal every six months? You don't, you know damn well that you're going to. So now take the average price in your market. Let's just, let's say, let's say it's 300,000, 200, we'll, we'll go down a little side, 200,000. That's a $6,000 commission. Let's say you're on a team, you're at 50, 50. That's still 1500. That's probably paying for your system. And that's if it's worst case scenario every six months, then you start thinking, well, crap, maybe if it's only paying for itself, is it worth it? Are you, are you working less? Are you feeling less frustrated? Do you feel like less balls are dropping? Can you scale? It's, it's, it's that mindset, right? So it's really sitting down and understanding, is this, is this where I'm going and, and, and getting the right people and the right systems around you? And when you really sit down and look at the numbers, it makes perfect sense. But we have a, that limiting belief or that fear of implementing it. Um, I was going to say that, you know, I've got realtor.com leads going into my uh firepoint and you know i've i've always noticed that the email the email alerts for from for firepoint get really high engagement 
Um, and we got a lot, we got a lot of replies and responses just from those listing alerts. I notice it more so than other platforms that I've tested. And, you know, they say email is dead, but I don't know what it is about the Firepoint emails that a lot of people engage with. I think it's, I don't know the reason, but it, it works. Yeah, well, it does work, and 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 it's it's and that's part of the systems, right? And and so so many people are are spending what budget they have on whether it's Realtor or Zillow or it's PPC, right? These are the things your systems are going to help you, and we're going to get into this when we start talking about the steps. But understanding the client's journey, we as agents get in our own way so many times because we get a lead and we tend to treat them all the same, right? Mm -hmm. But but a Realtor.com lead is different than a Facebook or a PPC, right? Because they're already raising. Oh. And they're saying, hey, St. Nick, I have a question on one, two, three, Main, right? They're ready to be pounded by those, 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 those uh, safe searches, those property alerts. They're hungry for information. They want, you guys are probably heard me talk, they want pretty pictures of pretty homes. It yeah. should be easy for you as an agent, if you have the right systems in place, to reach out. If Tristan's the lead, hey, Tristan, thanks for reaching out, Realtor.com. I can start sending you uh, homes that are similar to what you inquired about. And the great news is, I'm going to... I'm going to help you silence your phone. You know, when you're, you're on some of the public websites and, and you're getting information, you probably have dozens of agents reaching out to you and you don't know who's calling. You know oh, what? Yeah. I'm going to silence your phone. My website updates every 15 minutes and has 100% of the listings in our MLS. Safe searches, mark favorites. Uh, and what's great, it's only going to be me and my team reaching out to you. So you, all, you always know who's talking to you. And it's up to date where the public websites may only have 70, 80% of the listings. So, in fact, Tristan, have you ever, have you ever uh, inquired on a home that's not available on one of those public sites? Yeah. Right? Uh, they have yeah. the pain. Us as agents have that pain. We know sometimes when they inquire more than sometimes, the home's probably already gone. The reason it looks like such a smoking deal is because it was and it's off the market, but it hasn't come off Zillow or Realtor yet. Yeah. Identify the pain of the client's journey. And if you do that and you have the right tools in place, uh, like Firepoint, they're going to engage with you, right? And it's, and it's going to get them going. It's actually the script that I use, you know, to get them on my website. And I say, listen, you know, when I sit them down, if it's a realtor.com or a Zillow lead or whatever, you know, I sit them down at a buyer consult and, um, and I say, listen, so, you know, and, and usually I sat them down and we're not going to see that they have the house that they requested to see because it's been sold. Um, so I say, hey, remember how you uh, requested to see 123 Main Street, you know, the house that you wanted to see today? Yeah, I remember. And it was under contract, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, well, listen. So I say the same thing. My website or my app or whatever is literally updated every 15 minutes. It connects directly with the MLS. And right. so I said, homes, websites like Zillow sometimes depend on the actual agent to take the listing down or because it's third party data, it could take three or four days for the, for the status to actually change. I said, so, you know, looking on Zillow could cost you a home, literally cost you the house that you want. Yep. I said, so let me keep you updated at four times an hour by <laughs> setting you up on my website. Yeah, and so I'd say like it's a 75, 25. Sometimes they can't help it. They have to look on Zillow. They do. I, it's, it's, it's a drug. They're addicted. Yeah. But, but the problem is, 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 you know, we know their pain as agents. We know that they're frustrated about inquiring on homes that aren't available, but sometimes they don't know it and they don't know that there's a better solution. Right. And it's our job. And this is coming to your systems. That's part of the systems. Do you have the tool? Because I think one of the big mistakes, and, and let's face it, Zillow and Realtor, like, I think they're great leads. We pay for them uh, with our team, but they're expensive, right? So you need to convert higher. They should convert higher than others, which is going to be one of our steps that we get to about reporting and knowing where you're spending money and where it's coming from. Sure. But, one of the big mistakes as agents that we're making is we start sending them properties from our MLS. Well, one of the problems is in most MLSs, and I might even go out and say, I don't know of an MLS when you're putting them on a search from your MLS versus your, 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 your Firepoint or your CRM, they're typically landing on what looks like a listing page, right? And there's usually like a link to about five or six over inside. They're looking at a detail page that you maybe it's a client detail because you, you pulled out the, the, the other agent information, but it's missing a key thing, guys. It's, if you're doing that, stop, 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 stop. You're already costing yourself thousands and thousands of dollars. Get the system in place. This is where instantly the system's already going to zero base itself because when you send it from the system, it lands on a detail page, but it has call to action built in. So when you're talking about that engagement, it's because we know if we give them the same thing they're used to on Realtor on Zillow, if you haven't been on Zillow guys for a while, go on. When they look at a home right to the right of it, what's there? There's a fill form. Do you have questions? Request more information. You guys, we don't have that when we send listings from MLS. Right, so you want to know why they're not engaging is because we're sending them somewhere where there's no call to action. Send it from your system, so that when you're sending them there these listings, there's a call to action on the right hand side every single time that should be preloading all their information. So all they have to do is hit submit. 
right? Let's give them what they're used to, but let's train them to respond from our systems, right? That's how conversion starts going up. We got, so I, I always think of like Zillow and realtor.com as a jungle when all the leads that you get from them are like wounded animals. Every time they go back into the jungle, guys, they're going to get snatched up by a different predator. <laughs> like, I mean, it's, we laugh, but it's true, right? It's true. And Nick, I think we lost your audio. Then we lost uh, whatever you just did. We lost your audio. There yeah, you go. we lost his audio. But Gabe, uh, I have a question for you in regards yeah. to systems since we're here. Mm -hmm. With systems, do you categorize your clients and is that part of the systems process? Yeah, as far as like, are they new, hot, nurture? Yeah, we, like A, B, C, D. Like, are they ready within three months, six months, nine yeah, months, yeah. or a year yeah. after? So, so every, there's a lot of people that have A buyer, B buyer, C buyer. I'm a fan of of, of using a lot of the the, the predetermined um, statuses or anything. You have new, unknown, watch, everything like that. Absolutely. Okay. Can, you guys hear, can you guys hear me now? Yeah, yep. we can. Hear. Oh, perfect. I figured I figured out my microphone. Nice, you're working. Hey, welcome to the party. Twenty five minutes in. Nick. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that's what you get. That's what happens when you have a PC. There you go. There you go. Um, so yeah, so I, I that's all about having the systems, uh, Tristan. You got to be able to work smarter, not harder, right? If okay. you want to start taking your business to the next level, you have two yeah. options: put in more hours and have no work life balance, or get systems in place where you can still work normal hours and get the same results. It's, so it's what a, else? What else are you putting in place here to, to help grow? And what, what are the systems here? All right. So, okay. So, so we, I know we're about 25 minutes in. We told everybody we keep this around 30 or so. So, so here are the steps. And I want to break these down over, over some webinars in, over the coming months. So, so number one, guys, getting into business. This is, first of all, this is a business, right? We have, talk to any business owner out there. Do they not invest money into their business? They do. Any successful business, they've put it in. All right. Number one, you have got to implement and have a system, right? Leads are too expensive and it's too competitive, guys. If you don't have a system in place, you, you might be able to do some deals here and there, but you're never going to exceed or grow and, 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 and have the fastest speed to lead or the highest conversion. So, so get it. Everybody's like, oh, I can't afford it, I can't afford it. You can't afford not to, right? Again, go back to if I had the right systems, what would change in my business and be super conservative. And when you look at that, it's probably one deal every couple months. When you look at that one deal every couple months, what is your average commission? What do you get out of it? At least reinvest that back into your systems, at least that. And then newsflash, one of the steps we're gonna to talk to you about is creating a vendor program, right? Websites, uh, your lenders, right? You should have a respite compliant front-facing website that has all the proper disclosures so that your, your FirePoint, whatever it is, can bill the lender for half of it. And trust me, if you're working with your lender and you're closing deals and you're working with the right lender, they're not going to bat an eye at not only paying for half of your, your, your website CRM, but also your lead generation. And if you're shaking your head right now thinking it doesn't happen, newsflash, guys, it does. You just have to have the right systems in place to show them how by implementing and partnering with you and what you're going to do will make you both more money. And I'm going to show you guys, we're going to have an entire webinar just on a vendor program. Like it's, it's too much to add on top of this. We could go for hours, but you've got to get past that limiting belief. We're literally going to show you over the next few months um, and a little teaser at some of these one day events that I know you guys are doing that I'm going to help you out with. Yeah. Do all this guys. You don't have to pay for all of it. In fact, you shouldn't be. Well, um, dude, so at one of the, at one of the events we had, one of my agents was sitting, well, two of my agents were sitting in the audience and you said, you said something like, hey, everybody, you should try this text immediately. And both but I didn't of actually people, mean while I was talking, but like right now, text it. But did you but do dude, it right here live? They they right there, they did it because you know my agents are super drivers. They did it. <laughs> and I mean <laughs> the response was amazing, right? So I think one of your guys, yeah, he's like, holy text, crap, text, I just text. did. Oh, what's that next right? What, what, what was the text, Tristan? Because you know everyone's gonna ask you, what text was it? So well, it's I'm gonna, I'm gonna let I'll let you do it. So okay, I'm going to tell you three words in a minute, but I'm going to make people listen so they have to hear what happens. So, so I'm sharing this because as agents, sometimes we just get diarrhea of the mouth. We just throw up all over our leads and we think we're doing the right thing when we're not. Um, but so I'm talking to them thinking this is something they're going to take home and do. Should have known better. One of Tristan's agents stands up. He's like, uh, uh, I just want to share. I just sent out this text. Um, to, I think he said to 200 people. I think he sent it out to 200 people. And he said in the, like the last five minutes, and he can correct me, whatever, but it was, it was relatively fast. The last five or 10 minutes, I've already had 30 responses. 30 responses in like five or 10. He's like, I can't believe how simple that was. But A, he had the right system in place to be able to do it. 
key. Uh, and B, he got out of his own way and tried something, and it wasn't crazy. So uh, I don't want to give this away yet, but I'm going to. <clears throat> um, in fact, I'm going to post a link. This is part of our rule of three. All right, it's something that we've worked with and put together. And I'm going to give you guys a link to download the rule of three, which is um, something I've worked on with, with different coaches and put together. But basically, it's talking about new leads. Three, uh, you should be reaching out to new leads to make that initial contact three times a day for three days, three times a week for three weeks three times a month for three months. Your system can help automate this. So if you're writing that down, three times a day for three days, three times a week for three weeks, three times a month for three months. In fact, I'm gonna post a link here real quick. Um, let's see, I hope this will go. Let's see if it doesn't work, let me know. But it'll, it'll walk you through, this is the first step. But the text is, and this can be used early on in lead conversion, but it has to be used at the right time. And that's what's in the rule of three, because if you go out of order, guys, you through your lead conversion, I swear. Okay. I've done this with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of leads that have closed. But it can also be used long-term or going back if you haven't done it the way I just showed you. And what Tristan's agent is, is he had all these leads that have been in there where he maybe called and left a voicemail or put them on a drip email or did all this, but he had never heard from them. So if time has gone by, send out a three-word text to shift the conversion process. And it's all about shifting the dynamics of conversion. And what the three words are is if you've never had conversation with them or it's been a long time and they've probably forgotten who you are is, and so if, if, if Nick's one of my leads, it's literally just, is this Nick? And it sounds super lame and super easy, but I guarantee you the response. And what the sweet thing about this is guys, is when you get especially new leads and when they're coming in, we tend to get a new lead and we send them a, it should be a phone call. <clears throat> And when we, when we get a phone call, we tend to leave a, a voicemail, this diary of the mouth. They don't know who we are yet. They haven't asked for anything yet because a lot of this is forced registration. But we need to stop leaving voicemails. If we don't get them, we need to send that text. Is this in their first name? Because what happens is most of the time, and I always tell everybody to, to double dial. So, so listen to this. And this is what the rule of three goes through, and you can read about it. But Nick, you're my new lead, all right? I get your contact info. I reach out, I call you. You're not going to answer most of the time. Let's just be realistic. We all know that okay. leads don't answer most of the time, all right? I'm not leaving a voicemail. I am going to listen to your recording though, because I want to know, is it a male voice? If it says Nick, is it Nick? Or is it somebody else? Does it say, hey, this is Nick, sorry I missed your call, right? <clears throat> I want to know, do I have the right person? Because I know my follow-up, I'm going to have more confidence going into follow-up if I know it's the right person, all right? So I'm going to listen, I'm going to make a quick note in my system. I'm going to hang up, I'm going to dial again, all right? So now what's happened is, when do you typically get two calls in a row from an unknown number and they didn't leave you a voicemail? When does somebody usually immediately call you back? When it's an emergency. Something's wrong, right? So already things are going off a little bit. Things are going off. So just don't leave a voicemail again because sometimes they're going to answer. It'll increase your answer rate for initial leads. I guarantee it, number one. But if they don't answer, don't leave a voicemail again. Please send that text now. Is this Nick? If you're in their shoes, I just got a call from an unknown number. They called me right back, didn't leave a voicemail again. I'm already thinking, is something wrong or, or is this a sales call? All right, it's unknown. But now you get a text that says, is this Nick? A little hair in your neck starts standing up. More often than not, guys, and I see this from office to office, market to market, so don't tell me that's not going to work in my market because I've seen it all over the country. You're going to get a response that says, yes. Who is this? this is where the magic happens because the dynamics have now shifted. They've now given you permission to respond with whatever your spiel is. Right? When somebody asks you who, who you are, what you do, they listen a lot more. They're a lot more open to, to, to receiving what you have to say. Right, right. Well, it's all in the follow-up and the systems that we're going to go through over the upcoming webinars about how do we, uh, one thing I talk about all the time, how do we focus on the service and not the sale? Okay. When we don't have the right people and systems in place, we're, we're hustling to use your own word. We're hustling because we need those sales. We need those sales. We, we, there's only so much time in the day and everything's on me because I don't have the right people, right systems. We have the right people and systems in place. It can do a lot of the stuff that, that keeps people interested and intrigued. And now I can reach out, focus on the service aspect of things and get them to engage me back to, fo to, to work on service. So Gabe, for, for the systems in place, because I, I know that to reach 800, yes. you, you need these systems that, that we keep on saying. But yep. for me specifically, the systems I put in place to help me reach you know a high number, over 100 million in, in volume, uh -huh. and that's the automated texts that go out when a lead comes through, right? How an agent should talk to 
clients, how many times they should call them, yep. what the follow-up looks like, my, my Firepoint CRM, what needs to be going out on a routine basis, like what, what property searches and, and so forth. Tell us what you have in place to be able to get to 100. How did you scale? What systems did you put in place specifically? Yeah, so, so here's what I want to cover over the upcoming webinars. Here are kind of the steps. So number one, uh, you have to implement an all-in-one CRM and website. Guys, your, your back-end CRM, where your drips are coming from, where everything's coming from, um, has to be talking to the front-facing website, meaning I need to know when I send out uh, a safe search, did they open it? Did they come back to the website? I need to know who is currently on my website thinking real estate. Who, the, that When your front-facing website and your back-end CRM talk to each other, all of that is automated for you. I can literally log on and say, who's been on in the last seven days and looked at the most amount of properties? Who's been on the last seven days and saved the most favorites? Who's on my website right now? Who's, who's doing everything? So that's what that does. So step one. And by the way, I just want to add something real quick. You know, you have a lot, you have a lot of agents that, that, that argue whether or not you actually need IDX on your website. Oh, and, man. and, and, and that, that question makes me want to bang my head into a wall. Listen, um, they're not, they, <laughs> right <laughs> off the bat, they don't care about you, right? What they want is to look at homes. Later on, down the line, I'm sure they'll care about you as you build that trust. But if you don't have homes on your website, they're gone. They're gone. So, so and here's how anybody who doesn't believe that you need IDX on your website and that you instantly need to start sending listings to people, whether you talk to them or not, this is another big fail I've seen. And you want to grow your business, everybody in your database. I don't care if you've never spoke with them and they're brand new. I don't care if they're you just closed with them. It doesn't, or they're two years out. Everybody needs to be on a safe search, right? Cause it keeps them thinking real estate because they're looking for that pretty pictures of pretty homes and agents aren't doing that. Everybody needs to be in there. And if you don't believe that I challenge you go to Zillow as a consumer, right? Go to Zillow as a consumer, click around, just pick a neighborhood. If you had a, a dream home or you always wandered or whatever, look at some homes and click around and then watch your inbox, watch your inbox. It blows up. Yeah. You might be interested in this. Have you seen these? This one had a price change. Guys, Zillow is doing that for a reason because they're making millions and millions of dollars selling those leads back to us as real estate agents. And, and, and we do it. So I'm not dissing Zillow, but they figured it out. And what are they doing to get them to raise their hand to sell them back to us? They're hammering them with pretty pictures of pretty homes. But yet real estate agents, I think, sometimes are afraid to do that. And that's just something that you've got to work out in your systems to not do right? If you offend a, a, a few, that's okay. You're always going to lose more business uh, by not reaching out enough than you're ever going to lose by reaching out too much. I guarantee you that. And listen, here's what it comes down to. You know, it's obviously it's all about the follow-up. I mean, if, if, if a buyer or seller doesn't tell you to stop, then you keep going. If they don't tell you to stop, it means they don't want you to stop. Right. So, keep going. If they tell you to stop, they will. And then you stop. So when someone wants to know, you know, how do you sell 800 homes a year? Now we obviously have to look at the market you're in too, right? Like if Tristan sold 800 homes a year, it would be the whole, uh, it would be all of Malibu, which <laughs> listen, Tristan, I don't have any limiting belief. I know you could have hundred percent market share. I'm just saying that, um, you know, uh, there's no such thing as too much the, the consumer will tell you if it's too much and they'll tell you to stop. That, that is, so guys, if you're listening right now, you're watching this back. What Nick just said is so true. And what you should be striving for is, let me finish this before you judge me if you're listening to this right now. What you should be striving for when you're creating your systems and your follow-up, you should be striving to where you consistently, keyword here is consistently start getting told too much, stop. Because you know what's really, really easy at that point? Take a step back. Right. Exactly. Once you find that line, guys, take a step back and you're going to be shocked how many people start raising their hands and, and, and you start having inbound showing requests, inbound if deals happening. If you do too little, you don't want to lose a sale, right? If you do too much, they'll say, hey, you know, take it down. If you're at a 10, we need you at a seven. You know what and, I mean? And don't, don't most agents, like we all have the similar personalities. Wouldn't I rather know that I did too much and I might've lost a sale versus not knowing the so hundreds and hundreds of didn't do enough. Exactly. What did I do? Do they not like what I said? Do they not like this? Cause you don't know. Right. So there's things. So, all right. Sorry, Tristan, you've asked me like five times. So the road to 800, these are the things I want to cover. But I want to answer one question. Someone what? in the group, cause this is a really important question. I yeah. don't want to miss it. How fast is a follow up to online leads and what's the system? 
All right, so I'll go over my system real quick. So every lead that comes in, um, I'd say about like 70 or 80% of our leads come from Facebook. Then we have some realtor.com. Every lead gets a phone call, depending on the time of day or a text within two minutes. Um, they get 10 or 11 touches over the first 10 or 11 days. And then they are nurtured um, by, my, by our virtual assistants um, every 30 days. But my agents are here every single day between 9 and 11 prospecting, and they are doing the agent touches, calling, email, push listings, fixing search criteria, texting, you know, doing what needs to get done. So while our, while our VAs are the first one to follow up because we get four or 500 leads a month, um, we also have our agents in the office every single day, Monday through Friday, between 9 and noon, doing their own follow-up. Right, uh, right. So, you know, that's kind of how we do it. But it, on it, less it, than two minutes, you have to make that first contact. You, and it has to be as quickly as possible, guys. It can't be fast enough. I'm, I, I mean, if you can make it in 15 seconds, make it in 15 seconds. And I know <laughs> a majority of you are shaking your head. But I guarantee you, I just and just have your scripting down. Like if, you, if somebody registers and you call them in the first 30 seconds, they answer like, holy crap, you know what? I just registered. What the? Like, oh, yeah, you know what? I just happened to be sitting here. I got all excited. You just want to make sure, you know, I'm a real person here. we got access. How can I be of service, right? How can I help? Like, I'm a big component. Focus on it. Have a laugh with them. Like, absolutely. You know, it, yeah, you think I'm that quick to respond now? How quickly do you think I'm going to respond when the perfect home that meets the, uh, the needs of you and your family, right? Make it you, whatever fits your business, but it has to be immediate and it has to be frequent, guys. I, I, I'm a huge fan. Well, three, three times a day for the first three days. If you can only focus on one part of the rule of three, focus on that. Build it in and work it. And if you start getting told consistently and you're not going to, that it's too much, then take a step back. But you're going to start selling more homes and you're going to get addicted to it. So let's do this. Okay, so, so the 800 homes that you sold, um, that was primarily... PPC leads or so I believe that year yeah it was a lot of that was PPC not saying that has to be for you but that's how we started to me so how I started was a majority was was Craigslist back in the day I'm a lot okay. older than a lot of people probably watching this so back in the day we, we didn't have uh, Facebook to do a lot of the lead gen but I didn't have listings and I would literally take listings or find properties that had price reductions that I thought were great deals uh, call up the listing agent, get their permission to, to post it in an email works for me, double check in your market. I don't want to get anybody in trouble. Okay. But then I could post it and ask them to call, you know, either call in or email in, but that has to go to your system. It's a great way to do it guys. But if you think you're going to manage this with a notepad in your cell phone, it's not going to work. Right. right? They'll need to be going into a system so you can create follow-up. And so you can get them on a safe search, keep them coming back because they were longing for information. You need to get it in front of them. So, so it started with some lead generation. I did it wrong. Right. I started with the lead generation, started putting time in, and I didn't have a place. I literally tried the notepad. And when I sat down one day, I'm like, why am I exhausted? Because I'm working seven days a week, all day long, trying to get organized. And I had this horrible feeling that I was dropping the ball. Like I knew it. When I sat down and finally got a system in place, I'm like, whoa, why didn't I do this sooner? This is taking so much of the workload off. So it was lead generation. Lead generation, guys, is not hard right now. You know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, maybe even five, a lot of people thought lead generation was what the problem was in their business. Today, that is easy if you're surrounded by the right people in the right systems. And it can be super affordable too. Like it could even be almost zero cost to you other than your time, but that is money. But it, you have to have the right systems in place. So Road 800, it started with lead gen and systems. You could go back and forth, but I say get a system in place to manage and prospect those leads. Lead generation, whether that is posting other people's listings, uh, putting in man hours so that you can scale it up and get the opportunities, whether it's PPC, Facebook, Zillow, I think it should be a combination of all so you don't have all your eggs in one basket. Okay. We're going to go on a whole webinar deeper into that. Um, I think it needs to be understanding how to leverage your time and skills. Meaning, if you're starting to ramp up your business now because you have the previous two things I just talked about and you're still shuffling paperwork and you don't have a transaction coordinator, again, I'm going to ask you to sit down and go, okay, I wasn't shuffling all this paperwork and I wasn't doing all this. Could I sell two more homes a month? If I was, am I dark? and you're going to say yes, because when you start getting that busy, you need to focus on dollar productive activities, right? DPAs. So all of a sudden now it's leveraging your time and skills. If I'm making money because I'm getting speed to lead down, right? I'm using my systems and tools. I'm using pawns, whatever it is to get to these leads fast. But now I'm shuffling paperwork. You start seeing this, right? I'm busy. I'm slow. I'm busy. I'm slow. It's because when you get busy, you start doing all those non-dollar productive activities. So, so step three is really leveraging your time and skills. That means automating processes through your CRM 
or maybe bringing in that assistant. I'm a firm believer as you build your team, your CRM website's your first assistant because it works 24 seven, never gets sick, no days off, no, no health insurance, no taxes, all of that. But the next hire, I'm a firm believer in an assistant because they can take the non-dollar productive and you can keep doing what you're doing that got you busy. Okay, right. so uh, we're talking about having the right system in place. Yep. Uh, the right lead sources and lead generation. Right lead sources and lead generation. Well, right systems in terms of CRM and, and website and obviously right. having a system in place, whether it's automated follow-up or having a virtual assistant, um, having some lead generation sources, yep. whether they're you know, from Craigslist, pay-per-click, Zillow, realtor.com, if you want to do farming, Combination. farming, uh, you know, to certain subdivisions, uh, Facebook, and then three is obviously leveraging the people around you, getting an assistant to do um, some activities that, that aren't taking away from your prospecting and then you're being able to go out on appointments yep. uh, because what happens is if you're stuck doing paperwork, I mean, we didn't get into this business to do paperwork. You know, we and got, we suck at it. Let's be honest. Yeah, I, I'm terrible at it. We got into this business to just meet with people and form relationships and 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 and, and get clients and you know sell homes. Uh, and so if you're not out there doing it, like you said, it's going to be an up and down for you. And it's going to be like, oh, I had a great November and a crappy December when I had right. no closings. So and a lot of people are probably feeling that right now. If you're watching this, man, why am I so busy? Someone's so dead. It's because you stop doing the things that got you busy when you're busy. Right, so learning to leverage your time and skills is literally that. Figuring what am I good at, what's making me money, what's growing my business and what's not. The what not stuff too, guys, newsflash, that's usually like $10, $15 an hour activity. Right, you can leverage that out for next to nothing. So when you look at what, now you're looking like, holy crap, if that allows me to sell one more home again every two, three, four months, it more than pays for that person and it takes off my plate the things that I don't enjoy doing. And it's liberating right? All of a sudden I'm doing more of the things I enjoy. So, so yeah, so then leveraging your time and skills at that time, once you're not, you're better off because the next step that I think you need to do is once you get rid of that stuff, put that time you're spending shuffling paperwork around, start building that vendor program, right? You literally should be able to build a vendor program that's on your website that they're paying for your systems. They're paying for your lead generation. They're doing all this and they're happy to do so because they're part of that team and they're getting business out of it. And I'm literally going to walk through an entire webinar showing you guys how to do this and how to set it up. And not just me, but I'll have other people who have done this so that you can hear different ways of doing it. So after leveraging your time and skills, build that vendor program because now you should have time to do that and you're the face of your business. Um, and then at this point, it's probably where you're bringing in that buyer's agent. This is where that team starts growing if you want it to be. So you need to make sure that you have your follow-up plans in place, right? So that, cause not everybody's you. So now you need to be able to have them in place in your system. So somebody can pick up the ball and run with it. Right. right? So, of, yeah. Gabe, somebody there's a question from the audience for you. Sure. Yeah. Somebody yeah. asked a question, uh, you know, answer. they were like, you know, how should they handle a new lead that, that when they call them, they answer the phone, but they talk to them really briefly. And then they ask if they can call you back the agent in an hour and then the, and then they never hear back from the client. And so to me, if someone says they're going to call you back in an hour, I mean, they're not going to call you back. That's just what it comes down to. They're trying to get you off the phone. Yep. What I would do is in about an hour and a half, call them back and say, you know, Hey Alex, it's Nick with Keller Williams. Listen, I was in a meeting. I wasn't sure if you tried calling. I'm wondering if you have a few minutes to talk now about your home search. Yep. Yep. Super so simple. Simple. Super similar. Simple. Similar. So I'm going to say something very similar. I mean, it's, it's probably a tactic to get you off the phone. Uh, I'm going to say, hey, perfect, Nick, that's great. In the meantime, I'm going to shoot you over some similar homes that are similar to the one that you inquired on, or I think that might be of interest. So they have something in their inbox, right? I'm probably not going to wait an hour and a half. I'm going to probably wait about 55 minutes uh, and tell them, I said, oh, yeah, I know you're going to call in about, about an hour. I just wanted to make sure that you knew I was available <clears throat> if they answer, right? Um, and if they do, great. If they don't, again, it's a voicemail. Hey, I've had some time to do some research for you. I've got some great information about homes I think are going to be of interest for you and your family. I can't wait to hear from them. Dangle the carrot, right? You have to have a reason for them to call back. And Tristan had a good, a good, a good little suggestion in the thread too, saying that, you know, uh, you can text them. One of, one of our, one, you know, I try to have a conversation in that way because sometimes people are at work in the middle of the day. And so one of our texts that go out, uh, you know, after we try calling the text is, um, you know, Hey Gabe, it's Nick from Keller Williams. I tried, I tried giving you a call, but maybe texting is easier because you might be at work. You know, and then you start asking them yep. questions, you know, go down to do what's comfortable for them during the day when people are at work, they probably can't talk on the phone and there's nothing wrong with having yep. a conversation via text. Absolutely. 
and understand their journey. Where are they? So whoever asked that question, when they answer, what's their journey? Where did they come from? Did they come from Facebook? Did they come from PPC? Did they come from, from Zillow or Realtor? Were they asking a question? And your follow-up uh, is, is a little different on each one, right? So if they came from like Zillow or Realtor.com and they, they blow you off, they don't call back, pull some information, drive them to that detail page on your system, right? Not anywhere else so that there's call to action. Also identify the pain. Hey, hey and I'm sure something came up. I know we're all busy. Just so you know, poorhomesearch.com, my website, updates every 15 minutes. This is a great resource for you to quickly identify properties that are currently available, not that sold a while ago. All the information is there. In fact, I sent you a link to into your inbox or I text you a link. That's focusing on the service, not the sale. You're giving them an answer to the pains. So again, what you can do, understanding where they came from, give them a link to engage them. Why did they raise their hand? Why did they come in? It was probably because they were looking for information on a listing or on a property. So if they blow you off, it's okay, guys. It's okay. When they're ready, they will raise their hand to the person that they're comfortable with. Get them a link. Get them back on your website. That's why you need that all-in-one because if they blow you off, you need to give them what they were craving, and that's pretty pictures of pretty homes, the information. They need that, and when they're ready, as long as you stay in front of them, guys, I promise you, we have had, we have sold hundreds and hundreds of homes to people who registered a year prior, right? Uh, we t when we get into accountability and reporting, we'll talk about incubation periods and cash conversion cycle. As an agent, if you're spending money on, on Facebook boosting posts or even time posting them, you need to understand how long is that going to take to convert. If you're spending money on Realtor uh, or Zillow, you need to understand how long it's going to convert so you know how long you have to hammer them. You guys are smiling. Am I, am I just going off too much? No, 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 no. In the thread, in the thread, someone had said uh, that they're moving from LA to San Diego. Tristan's like, hey, if they need to sell in LA, <laughs> Tristan's trying to farm our, our, our members. Nice. For our um, well no, done. What I was saying was, uh, what I was going to say in, in terms of incubation, a lot of stuff we see on, on our group saying, you know, I tried to call this lead five or six times and they haven't answered. Should I kick them off my, my, my search? Like, no. Do you want no. to know the longest we had a lead in our CRM was six years. They searched consistently almost every day, never replied to anything. They bought a million dollar home. Guys, when they're ready, they will be ready, right? They, they just, you have that. And this is what they said when they called, they said, hey, we just want to say we've been on your site forever. We love it. Thank you so much for sending the listings over the course of these six years. And they were pre-approved for a million bucks. You never know. Just let them well, tell you when they're ready. That's why I'm saying when <laughs> they're not ready, they'll let, the, let you know. Don't stop and buy or die. Don't stop unless they tell you. Buy or die. I love that because I say it all the time. Guys, and you, here's what, like this literally will start happening. And I'm sure you've had this happen, Nick, Tristan. Like when you just get them on the safe searches and, and, and you're letting your system work for you, you literally will start getting an inbound email or a call that says, Nick, thank you so much for sending me listings over the last couple of years. That one you sent yesterday is awesome and we're finally ready. It's been automated. You're like quickly you know, typing in the phone number into your CRM so you know exactly who it is and what was sent. Guys, it happens, but you have to have the right systems and tools. So yeah, so, yeah, so when, you know, th that's part of the follow-up plan. Then it gets to accountability, which your system can help with and then reporting. So you understand where your money is going and where you're coming back. So those are literally the seven steps to get from probably where you are to 800 or a thousand. And I, I mean, I work with teams that are over a thousand. I mean, they make what I was doing look like nothing, but it comes down to systems <laughs> and tools. And, and man, when you guys get it going, you're going to be shocked how much less you're working and how much more you're making. And that's why we got into this industry. Not to buy, lots. by the way, if you're going to sell 800 or a thousand homes, I mean, you're going to need, you know, you're going to need the, the people and the systems. You just have to, there, you cannot sell. I and mean, there's an agent in my office. She is fantastic. She'll sell 130 homes this year. And that's her, that is the ceiling and she knows it. And so she hired an assistant. She hired a buyer agent. You know, now she has the systems in place in terms of the CRM and the lead flow. And this is just the stuff that you just, you start to stumble into it, right? Like, if you're, if you're a solo agent and you're getting, you know, 30 or 50 leads a month via PPC or, or realtor.com or Facebook, you know, that's going to start to snowball once you get that CRM and that automation in place. And so for me, I always say, listen, I, I just let my business grow organically because if you force it, which I've done in the past, you, you spend and waste a lot of money. You just got to yeah. let it grow organically and when it, and it will. And then you will know when you need the assistant and when you need the showing agent, when you need the buyer agent. And if you don't want to grow a team, it's okay. Like the systems, you can still do a lot of these steps, but now it's it, it's for you and you're still working smarter and not harder. Guys, like we didn't get in this business to never be able to take a vacation, to never be able to turn this off, 
right? To not be able to enjoy time with our, our friends, our families. Like there are tools that are available. And, and not only that, I firmly believe, guys, if you do not in the, ne- in the very, very near future, in the next couple of years, if you do not have a system in place, you're just not going to be able to compete. And I'm, and I'm sorry, I'm hearing it coast to coast. Even referrals, man, they are on sites and they're finding themselves just, they want the ease and the access. And they're now going outside what they normally would do because it's just so easy for them, right? And it, it's not that they didn't like you, but it is just how the industry is changing. And there's a reason why teams are the fastest growing segment in real estate right now. It's just because they have the systems and tools in place for everybody to work smarter, not harder, better work-life balance, all of the above. Got it. Love it. So, yeah. Cool. So, yeah, I mean, there's our 30-minute webinar that went 54 minutes. <laughs> so, Gabe, I have a question for you. Yes. If, if you've got the system in place, and part of the system in place is, is a CRM, you know, let, let's just pretend it's FirePoint. Are you putting in the leads that you're getting from open houses, from past clients, from your sphere? Are you putting everybody on there and on a property search as well? So anybody that I know is a valid person. So let's just go that sphere, uh, past clients. So here's the the big one that I get. All right. We all have our buyers that we're working with. We have them on a property search. Uh, They buy. We pause it during pending. And I'm, I'm good with that. Right. Let's pause it during pending so they don't get distracted if something comes on. But then they're like, but then they sold. I'm like, okay, perfect. Now that they sold, they should be on a property search. No, no, we don't want it. They just, they just bought. That, that's a limiting belief. You need to do two things, well, a couple. In your CRM, in your system. First of all, they're probably in your system. Like they came in there new. Then we moved them maybe to hot while they were looking, right? Uh, their status, we can filter our database. Then when they're under contract or pending, we change our status to pending under contract. We got to closing. We got our check. We went in there. We marked them as closed. Everything's turned off. Guys. This is, we're hurting ourselves here. This is somebody who knows, likes, and did business with us. At closing, they need to go in. They should come from under contract or pending. Their status now to me should be nurture. And you change them from a buyer to a seller and a buyer, right? You don't mark them as closed and leave them in your database as a buyer because that's not what they are. Once they own property, they're a seller. They are a seller. It doesn't matter when. They will be selling. That property will sell eventually. So absolutely. And what happens at closing is, hey, Nick, you know what? You know why we're waiting for the paperwork to come back that they're making copies or putting on a disc? You know all those uh, listings that I'm sending you via email to help you find the, the home that you bought today? Yeah. Yeah. What I'm going to do is once a month, I'm going to start sending you homes now in your neighborhood in the same format. But this is going to allow you once a month to know what's going on around you and values around your home. My past uh, buyers have absolutely loved that. So again, once a month, I'm going to start sending that to you. Awesome. I don't ask their permission. I just tell them I'm going to do it. So now I've got one automated email a month going out to them, something of value. Who doesn't want to know what homes are for sale around them, what their value is. It's also going to hopefully keep them from calling a sign to find out what the list price is to start building a rapport with somebody else. And it's automated. Win, win, win. Absolutely. Somebody in, in most databases, when I go in and help them kind of get their systems in place that, that they're falling down is they're not putting their past clients on a safe search. Yeah, like, because- oh, I do a market snapshot once a year. Not enough. I want them to know every single home that's going around because oh, I know you got that. Don't lose it. Because here's the other thing. A lot of times these are neighbors, people that they know. If that home doesn't sell, do I want them remembering me and that I'm on the ball and that I told them what that home was on the market for? I want them recommending me. You start getting referrals because once a month, you're top of mind for them, right? It, it, there's so many values of it, but yet as agents and as teams, uh, and, and I don't know about you guys, but most teams, if they look into their closed buyers in the last 12 months, most of them are not on safe searches. That is true. And we see a lot of people who recently bought homes still coming back and looking on it. So right. you know, same thing. Are... we're going to go there. Gosh, we're going super deep. Sorry, guys. But the same thing, if you're on the list side, adopt those buyers because you know the, 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 the buyer's agent is probably going to drop the ball. So somebody, if you're a listing agent, somebody just buys that listing, those people, once in most states, I'm not going to get you, I don't want to get you in trouble. Most states, once escrow closes, your, your agency relationship is over, right? So something I love to do, here's a nugget for the 46 of you that are still on here. Man, after closing, reach out. You can send them a handwritten note. Thank you so much for purchasing the home. Hope you enjoy it as much as, as my previous clients did. By the way, if you want a copy of all the high definition photos and virtual tours, please email me at this email address and I'll send them over to you focusing on the service. They're now reaching out to me. I can send them all the pictures and the virtual tour. Guess what? I have now another set of names and email address to put into my database. Next phone call or next email is going to be probably a video email. And by the way, a lot of my past clients have loved once a month getting an email, letting them know homes for sale so they know the values. I'll start sending that to you once a month. 
I don't ask their permission. So I just adopted the buyers on my listing and now I have another seller in my database. It's because I have the right systems and tools in front of me. It takes seconds, guys. It's just not having the tools in place to capture that. I love it. So Gabe, what should we expect in this series in the next few months? Every yeah, month we're going to be talking to you. What, what's next? Yeah. So I want to go through the steps. So I'll read through them again. So the implementing the CRM website, the I, I, uh, identifying the right lead sources for them, leveraging time and skills, uh, creating a vendor program, creating proper follow-up plans to leverage buyers, agents, or listing partners. If I build a team accountability, that's for yourself. Uh, and for your team, and then reporting. Understand where I'm spending money and where I'm getting it back. Um, sorry, you got to keep turning the light on. And what I want to do on the upcoming webinars, we're going to break those down one by one so we can go really deep. I will be more than happy to share scripts, templates with you guys, practices, the lead sources, what I had success with, where I failed, where I think I went wrong. How did I leverage the time? How did I build? What are, if we're going into that, what are the splits? Like, what kind of vendors can be part of a vendor program? Uh, what kind of follow up plans? How long should they be? Uh, accountability. What are we looking for? Uh, and then reporting. How do? What is ROI? How do I? How do I? How do I? Uh, uh, create it. How do I? You know, pull those numbers and what am I looking for? So allow us to go into each one and go really deep because whether you're single agent just starting or you're a team, we can go deep into those and really help them understand. It's it's really easy to say, hey, I wrote 800 of these seven steps. Well, what the heck do those seven steps mean? So it's really getting to do those. And I know you guys have got these one day events and stuff coming up. These are things we're gonna basically go in depth. I'm chatting with people probably for an hour. So we're gonna go in deeper and then be on site to really help them. So if they're taking the time to come to these events where we can help them on site face to face. And again, guys, you don't have to be PowerPoint. I don't, it'd be great if you were, but if you have systems, let me help you. You can, you can do this. Just find the one that's right for you, but you have to get a system, guys. You so have- can you tell us a little bit now that we're wrapping up where we're at the end? We've got 40 people on here and about 25 people on, on live. Tell us what FirePoint is. <clears throat> this, this series is sponsored by FirePoint. So tell us a little bit about FirePoint. Yeah, so, so it, it, FirePoint is, is, is the all-in-one CRM. So this is your front-facing website integrated with your MLS. IDX, normally updated approximately every 15 minutes. I can vary a little bit per MLS. And the back-end CRM, but they're tied together, right? So that means my drip emails, my property searches, my task management, everything, my, my, my lead generation, lead capture, everything is in one spot. So you're pretty much running your business out of one spot. If I have to go check my, my Gmail and I, have to go ch- and I have to check my phone for texts and I have to do this, everything is in the back end. You're calling, you're call recording, you're texting, emails, drip emails, all of that in one spot. And then the front facing website. So when my buyers are logging on, I know who's on there. When they're asking their question, filling out a form, it's on my website coming to me or my assistant or my buyer's agent. So we can respond uh, right away. It's the, it, it's, um, you know, pre or campaigns, but this is where you can build them in and we're going to show you how you tailor this to your business so that you basically have that 24 seven assistant working for you and your team. Does FirePoint have auto responders? That was a quick question. Yeah. That. So there's, there's, yes. So we have different types and, it, and that, that you can go deep on that. Right. Are we talking, you know, will the system automatically uh, email or, or text somebody when they register? Absolutely. Does it respond when they inquire property to let them know that we get it? Absolutely. And again, every, the way we all do this, like it can go from dumping leads into pond so that multiple people can be notified at one time. So the fastest person to get there can grab it. The drip campaigns, the call recording, the dialing, uh, yeah, video email integrations. To, uh, there's a ton. What I'd recommend if you want to learn more, everybody's different. Business is different. We don't do like mass demos. Um, I think it, firepoint.net, I think slash LCA, Tristan, I think you have a link. If you guys do that because we do have a promo also for LCA where we waive the setup fees to get you guys in. We want you to be able to get in and start using it um, as easily as possible. Um, go on there. There's a lot of information. Um, you can also schedule um, a product tour. That way it's one on one with just uh one of our reps and you guys so we're answering the questions that are important to you because if you're a large team doing a lot of lead generation you're probably going to have different questions and if you're a team trying to scale it and get going they can show you what the vendor programs look and all that we're still going to go deep um on the webinars on all this to tailor it to you um but then they can answer those questions uh for you guys and then again the one day shows that you guys having but yeah once a month we're going to be doing these and uh, and answering questions. And a lot of these are going to be live, I'm guessing, on your guys' site. So still ask questions. We'll jump in there and answer as much as we can. Um, so six, you, six was ask accountability quick, uh, and seven, real quick, quick question. Uh, six was accountability and seven was reporting. Someone just asked the difference between Lion Desk 
um, with follow up boss and, 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 and I'm sorry, FirePoint, Lion Desk, and Follow Boss. Lion Desk and Follow Boss are standalone CRMs. FirePoint is a CRM as well as an IDX website. So that's yeah, what it all Go is. get a website and build it and get IDX. And then a lot of times they don't tie in or you're trying to get them to go in and you have different things. We're just, it's all in one. And again, if, I would highly, highly recommend if you're serious about taking your business to the next level and, and, and having a little bit better work-life balance and working smarter and harder, get an all in one, get the one that works for you. Again, I'd love for you to check out FirePoint, but just get one. It will change your business and how you work when everything is working together. Gage, yeah. can you can you quickly do step one through seven so that people know what we're going to yep. cover in the next few months? Just yep. go like one, so two. Number one is implementing the all-in-one CRM and website. What does that mean, right? To actually show you what it means to implement it and how it works, and, and all that, so we can so we can highlight it. I'll highlight it in PowerPoint again. You can adapt this to your business, but how to implement it, all right? right number, so, number yeah. So number two, identifying lead sources. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to go into those as far as what the difference is between the different types of lead sources, which ones are typically more money, less money, those conversion cycles, things like that, Got it. Uh, and how to maybe mix and match so that you don't have all your eggs in one basket basket. Number three, leveraging your time and skills, warning signs. When is it time to start looking to offload, whether it's paperwork or some showings or whatever it is so that you're doing what you do best, uh, and not trying to do everything. And, and, and honestly, probably at that point converting less because you're, you're, you're a control freak and not letting go of everything. <clears throat> um, then number four, especially once you've leveraged some of that out, uh, creating a vendor program. How do, now that we have there, hopefully we have the right people around us. How do we identify them? How do we create this vendor program? So they're helping us uh, pay for the systems and tools and the lead generation. Cause I'm not going to lie to you. It's, it can get expensive depending where you're spending your money, and how you're scaling it. But again, you have partners out there that you're working with that'll help you pay for this, that benefit from it, right? And they want to do this. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. Um, create follow-up plans uh, and how to stick to them. When you have the systems in place, you've done this, now creating the follow-up plans, because at this point now, we got the vendor programs, we know who can help us with the follow-up, meaning who can follow up, the lender, you, the agent, uh, and what lead sources, because each lead source is gonna have a different follow-up plan because they have a different incubation period, right? So we're gonna yeah. talk about those. Uh, accountability, everybody's favorite thing, right? That's number six, right? Accountability. Uh, number six is accountability. How do we hold, hold ourselves accountable? Our assistant, our buyer's agent, anybody and every our lenders, anybody who might be on there. What are we looking for? What can our, what should we be looking for in our systems to help everybody be accountable uh, to get the job done to get that highest conversion? Because the last thing we want to do is pay for the leads, generate them, and then not be accountable to the right follow up, right? And then Perfect. last, um, <clears throat> reporting. How do we track the money that we're spending for lead generation and how do we properly track lead sources? Which ones are working for us? Which ones aren't working for us? Which one should we maybe adjust? Perfect. And then it's a lot to tie together, but when you do that, I guarantee you the business just takes off. Love it. All right. We'll stay tuned for our next webinar in this series. And that's going to be in January. And then we're also going to be in St. Louis. Gabe's going to be on stage for about an hour. Wait, and St. Louis or Atlanta? Which one's first? Is it Atlanta? It's St. Louis, January 8th, and then Atlanta, March 14th. Okay. And then uh, we're going to be doing these one days throughout the nation. Um, I know we're talking we're talking about Portland as well. We don't know when that would be. Obviously, Nick, we're probably going to end up in Michigan somehow, right, in the summer. Um, so we're going to be all, all throughout the United States. So And I've seen your out. speaker lineup. You guys have got some rock stars that are going to just drop nuggets and nuggets and and guys i i do these non-stop across the country you need one thing when you come to these shows you literally need to walk away with one thing to more than make it worth the visit and and the price of admittance so absolutely awesome well thank you so much gabe for being on anything you want to add nick nope all right thanks gabe awesome, guys thank you so much thank looking you forward everyone. to it. later see ya